Welcome back to you live at 6 something, 6.27 in the evening. Lily Richards. Connor Nesta. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm, I'm good. You look magical and I love getting your haircut. Thank you. Do I look more magical because I'm in front of a really magical tree? Yes, it's Christmas time. Are you feeling the Christmas spirit? Yep. Oh, it was so busy at work today. Yeah. Everyone else is feeling the Christmas spirit. It was crazy. That's good though, isn't it? walking away at the door because the shop is too full. Do you feel books um, are a great gift to give? Um, they're the best, isn't that the point of last week's segment? That you can just yeah. give them to anyone. But yeah, but no, that was the point yeah. of last week's segment. That was good. So, but you've brought in a really good, good recap, Bess. That's what we talked about last week. Books are the best. Yeah, books are the best this time. Books are still the best. But um, This just in. <laughs> books are the best. Are still the best, yes. Nice bit of alliteration. Um, so, John Ronson, you may probably not remember. Is it Mark's you might. Robert? No. Oh. Oh, wouldn't that be great? It would be really great. Yeah, he's British too, though. Oh, mm. nice one. Lives in London. They might live near each other. There's I, a musical I bet they've crossed paths before. Sorry. <laughs> I like the cover. Do it. Lost at Sea. The John Ronson Mysteries. So the cover is some familiar to the other ones because he's done a whole series. So he did The Men Who Stare at Goats, which was also made oh. into a movie with George Clooney. Such a good movie. That was yeah. a weird movie. Did I love you it. not like it? Who directed that movie? Uh, I don't know. weird. Probably, it's a weird book. Yeah, yeah, that was, yeah. I, I quite like that movie actually. It was good, right? It was weird, but it was good. Well, it kind of picked up on the sentiment of the book, and so what John Ronson does, he's a journalist for The Guardian, and he does tend to write about weird things, like fringe events. Yeah. He also wrote um, The Psychopaths, okay. Psychopath Test, which I originally heard about because there was a really cool segment from it uh, on This American Life, which is a wonderful podcast. If you haven't already checked it out, you definitely should. A weekly radio show from the States, and they had him on it once reading out from his book about the Psychopath Test. Uh, and so that was when he studied Psychopaths. If you haven't read that, it was a great one. This, however, like the other ones are more kind of on a theme. This one is a collection of his journalism. Okay. Journalist for The Guardian, and he's written a whole number of different assignments, but always on the side of the fringe. So kind of weird outlier things. One in here that is music related is he got, he, Robbie Williams got in contact with him. Nice. Um, Good yeah, on, he's quite a famous journalist in, in Britain for those specific things. So when Robbie Williams decided that he wanted to investigate paranormal activity and primarily ghosts, uh, sorry, primarily aliens, he um, tracked down John Ronson and said, would he go, like, essentially on a date with him uh, to America? I think it was somewhere in Nevada and they went to a conference yeah. together. So like a little, a little Robbie crowd. Williams. Robbie Williams. And John Watson describes this as, as why Robbie Williams was so absent from the music scene for a really long period of time. Because you know how he was sort of like quite popular and then just disappeared? Yeah. Basically, he was at home trying to find aliens and alien Good life forms. Robbie. Yeah. Yeah, so they went to a conference together and quite a few people recognised him. But he was very, um, so there's a really good article in here about that, about how sort of quite serious Robbie was and taking the, the matter to heart. That's awesome. Yeah, good, right? And then there's... I'd recommend the Robbie Williams biography. Would you? I read it and it was incredibly amazing. Like, I never liked Robbie Williams. I just knew who he was. Was it uh, Did he write it? No, he didn't write it. Um, it's really interesting. Right, okay. And it, it kind of goes into the, the whys and the wherewithal about why he is quite a strange dude. Yeah. And that explains his obsessions with aliens. Oh, slightly. really? And yeah, there's some, there's some weird stuff going on with Robbie Williams. Good, bit of a twin read there. Yeah, I think you should. I, yeah. Seriously, it, it sounds like, a, well, why would I read about Robbie Williams? But it's really interesting. Robbie Williams gives me a very Tom Cruise sort of vibe. Yeah. Scientology, backbone. Yeah, yeah. Very much so. Or a Mel Gibson vibe. Yeah, anti-Semite. An anti-Semite uh, and, and that movie Signs as well, mostly. Interesting. Yeah. But, so it's not all paranormal activity. There's also like a really cool segment in here on credit cards and because and, it was all from, the articles are from the early 2000s, right up until 2006 roughly, so just around the time of the financial crisis. Mm. Um, but before it all broke and everyone really realised we're like subprime and the whole kind of lender notion and how everything has giant interest. Yeah. Terrible idea to have a credit card, by the way. Um, everyone credit had credit cards. cards. Yeah, definitely. So there's a whole article in here on a gentleman who had a credit card and he kind of, John Watson, like explores why this particular person was targeted with, by credit card companies. At one time he had something like 10 credit cards from everything from like Barclays and they were loaned to this guy even though he was in debt and he was using each credit card to pay off the debt from the previous one. And he was £30,000 in debt by the time he took his own life. Um, and there's another one in here, a number of, all about how like evil money loving can be when you become obsessed with it and sort of greedy and you can't kind of keep your stuff above, you from it. Yeah, totally, yeah. like you can't get your head above water. My favourite one, which is bleak that I like it, but there's this great story about this family that moved to France and the yeah. guy had had terrible credit in Britain, but he moved to France for a fresh start and bought this big chateau 
Um, and they were going to do like this million dollar golf uh, course on it, but they yeah. basically couldn't afford it because they had no money. Um, they lived there for years and years, the husband and the wife and the son, but things started to go slightly downhill one Christmas when the son got a panicked phone call from the husband who had said that his mother had fallen over and hit her head and he'd, she'd died. Um, oh, not his fault. Oh. Um, but because she'd gone and died, he decided that he would burn her and then pour concrete over her. What? His explanation for why he did this, it wasn't because he killed her and he was trying to hide the evidence, it was because in her will, she really wanted to be cremated and then kept him in a mausoleum. And so with all he had to hand, burning her and burying her in concrete, that was just the closest he could do to keeping her wishes. <laughs> wow. Amazing. Creative. Right? Yeah, really creative and thoughtful. And then he killed himself. So <laughs> that whole family basically imploded. Wow. Yeah. And that's all in that book? That's all in this book. There's also a really interesting story about Martine Rothblatt. Have you ever heard of her? Yes. Really? She makes no. a lot of money, so maybe you might have. Yeah. You're interested in entrepreneurial business people? Yes. So she, I hadn't heard of her before, she's America's most reclusive billionaire. And she was originally a he, so she had a sex change in the wow. 1990s. And then she had like a brainwave about radio and came up with a satellite radio for, the ca for cars, mm -hmm. which is this hugely successful business. Um, so she kind of changed the world once. And then she had a daughter with her wife, lesbians now clearly, but they got married when she was a man. Um, and she, they had a daughter who had uh, like a pulmonary kind of condition, a lung condition. Mm. And they said that she was 10 years old and she only had like a couple of years to live. And so she, with no medical background whatsoever, went into researching this, came up with a, um, cure. a cure. Um, cashed it. Paint, painted it, yeah. And now her daughter's like 28 or something. Totally fine. She's sweet and they're loaded. Yeah, and she's saved like a whole lot of lives. She sounds like an incredible woman. Yeah. John, John Ronson. John Ronson, and it's called the John Ronson Mysteries, Lost at Sea. So if you want to delve into the world of John Ronson, this book is great. Anyone interested in journalism, fringe events, he's really funny as well, laugh out loud stuff. Wonderful Christmas present for everyone. Um, what does that go for? 40 bucks. Deal! Steal! Sold. So much information all fitted into just a few pages. Yeah. Lily, thank you. It's a pleasure. It always is. Mm. Merry Christmas, Lily. Oh, Merry Christmas, What are you doing on Christmas Eve? Uh, going to Waiheke. We won't be seeing you then. No. I know you're just like coming <laughs> asking, are you coming last, to work? No. Last, last lost in the land of lilies. Yes, yes. Yeah. For the year. Well, we wish you a very Merry Christmas to you and your family. Right back at you. And we'll love to see you again next year. Okay. Oh, it's so Christmassy around here with the tree yeah. and with you and your nice yeah. top, by the way, which yeah. someone complimented you on as well. Yeah. It's from Kmart, guys. You can just go and get it. Brilliant. Yeah, I know. Oh, there you someone go. Nice patterns, Dahlia. Thanks. Good stuff. Okay, um, oh yeah, okay.